Well, Anjem Chowdhury has been the face of radical jihadi propaganda in this country for 15 years. But has the danger moved elsewhere, for example, the internet? And is the government's prevent program intended to counter radicalization working? Well, joining us from Birmingham is Jahan Mahmood, who was an advisor to prevent under the coalition government. And with me here in the studio is Sara Khan, who's co-founder of Inspire, set up to counter extremism and gender inequality. Sara Khan, let me start with you, because if prevent had worked properly, Anjem Chowdhury and his followers wouldn't have got half as far as they did, would they? Well, I think it's very important to acknowledge all the positive work that Prevent is doing, and we, we don't often have that discussion and debate. Um, we know, for example, that Anjum Chowdhury just stood on, it was literally dancing on the, the law, um, on the, the line of the law. But I think, let's look at Prevent, let's see what it's done. The government has said that around 120 people have stopped, been stopped from travelling to Syria, including 50 Muslim children. We know that Prevent has taken down 58,000 pieces of illegal material. It has worked in partnership with Muslim civil society groups across the country, many of them producing counter-narrative videos online, on the internet, which have had over 15 million views. So that's important work that needs to continue to so happen. Is the problem, in your view, that Prevent isn't getting the support from the community that, in your view, it deserves? Well, I think there is a lot of support that's happening. I mean, I know numerous local Muslim organizations. We know that Prevent has engaged with around 370 mosques in the last year. It's engaged with around 385 community organizations. So that engagement is happening. Those projects are being delivered. But of course, there's always more that needs to be done. Well, let me put that to Jahan Mahmoud. Um, the Prevent system is a force for good in Sarah's view. Do you agree? Well, le let me ask her this question then. Why have 800 people travel to Syria if it's working. Its outreach has clearly not worked. We clearly have an issue. The online counter-narrative doesn't come anywhere near the propaganda uh, videos that are out there. And this is something a number of advisors have been saying for a number of years. I mean, I was one of them who said that back in 2010. Since then, it's just amplified and got a lot worse. The government took its eye off the real issue. And I'm afraid Prevent has lost its credibility in the Muslim community, for which reason its outreach program hasn't uh, worked too well. Prevent has lost its credibility. Well, That's would, damning, isn't well, it? I, I, w I would disagree with that. And I think, I think we need to have a fair and honest discussion. There are many groups, including in Birmingham, that Jahan is probably familiar with, like Kick It, for example, who've, who've come out and said they do excellent work with mosques, uh, working with vulnerable individuals who have substance abuse, who alcohol abuse, who've been tempted to become radicalized and, and join Syria, who the government has supported. And groups like that have openly said, we welcome working with the local prevent coordinator. And by not having that support, we wouldn't be doing what we are doing today. But hasn't it become toxic now and therefore needs to be done? I think, Kathy, what we are not having a discussion about in this country is how has prevent become toxic. And I've written about this in great depth in my book, um, which is out yesterday, called The Battle for British Islam, which looks at how Islamist organizations in this country have gone up and down the country deliberately peddling lies and myths about Prevent. So, for example, saying things like, if you grow a beard or wear a headscarf, you will be referred to Prevent. These are absolutely false lies and myths. And all that does is actually weaken Muslim parents' uh, support of Prevent when they can see that their children are being radicalized. It is irresponsible and dangerous. Jahan Mahmoud, I mean, those are strong words. Lies and myths about Prevent are being peddled by the community, according to Sarah. Well, if that's the case, then why is it that a number of teachers have rang me up and said that the training was very poor? Why is it that even imams have actually called me and said that they don't fare any better after the rap video, which I actually featured in for the government in 2010? So clearly it can't all be lying and it can't all be a myth, especially the fact that we have individuals who now, because of Prevent, feel isolated and unfortunately you're looking for a sense of belonging elsewhere because they feel discriminated against. What I would like to see, and I hope that is in Sarah Khan's book, that she criticizes British foreign policy, which she hasn't really done um, over the years that I've watched her over TV and um, listened to some of her debates, to hold the media to account for giving people like Anjum Chowdhury uh, an opportunity to speak on a national platform. This is a soapbox preacher who ended up being a national hate preacher. So the media should also be held to account. I know that Channel 4 interviewed him a number of times. Why give an individual like that the space and the time to help recruit individuals into his cause? And just one extra point. In 2014, I was on a BBC interview where they played a recruitment video by ISIS. And central to that was a young man called um, Nasser al Muthan, I believe it was. Now, why play a recruitment video? What do recruitment videos do? They recruit. And then, we are w then we're bashing on a Muslim, saying, well, you never do enough. 
I'm, okay, I'm the, afraid this is a lot bigger that, than the Muslim community. Okay, let me put that to Sarah. The media has a responsibility, and the government needs to admit that Western policy has. Well, has we know that there's never been a single cause for in each individual to become radicalised. There's a wide range of issues, but I can tell you with some of the cases that I've worked with, y gir girls as young as 13 who have left, who tried to leave the country to join ISIS, who have absolutely no understanding of geo-complex politics in the Middle East, who don't even understand who Saddam Hussein was or Iraq. Um, but they've been radicalized by the kind of same Islamist ideology that Anjan Chowdhury preaches. And just on a, on a final point, um, in your package before, you had someone talking about the issue of identity. And identity is crucial. In 2006, Anjan Chowdhury um, plastered, um, when he was part of the uh, banned organization of Faraba, he plastered bright rectangular yellow stickers across lampposts in East London saying, British va values versus Islamic values. This is the point about identity. They are trying to confuse young people about identity, and we have to promote the idea of a British Islam and a reconciled British Muslim identity. Sarah Khan, Jahan Mahmoud, thank you very much for joining us.